going to Edgar. I'm going to step away just to close the door, but I can still hear. That's fine. Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, can you see me? Is my camera on? I can't see me, but anyway, I hope you can see me. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, good morning, even, because it depends on which part of the world you're in. And good afternoon and possibly good evening, but wherever you are, hello. And it's lovely to spend some time with you again today. Welcome to today's edition of the True Temperance Family Health Show, season two. Yes, as Shirley said last time, this is a long season, but we're still in there fearfully and wonderfully made Know Your Body. It's lovely to have you with us, and we are looking forward to another exciting um, time with you, session with you. So those of you who are joining us on YouTube, welcome to you as well. And uh, those of you who are joining us not live, but later, great to have you with us. So as you can see, well, you can't see yet, but if I move this forward, you will be able to see quickly. Today, this week on the True Tempered Health um, International Health Show, we have a presentation by our friend, because I'm calling him our friend now, Dr. Franco Taylor, and it's vitamin C in the Bible. So you may need to get your Bibles ready if you have some Bibles. If not, you'll be, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. I'm sure we'll have um, a good session together. So that is today's presentation. And we'll just run through a little bit on the promos. So joining us, if you don't know me, my name is Sharon. I forgot to say that. Joining us, hosting, um, so I'm your host, and co-hosting is, drum roll. Joan. Hi, everyone. It's Joan here, Joan Cornwall. No stranger to you. If you've been with us on the True Temperance Health Show for throughout the two and a bit years we've been going, Joan is a regular presenter on here, and so she's co-hosting today. So lovely to have you with us, Joan. I'm happy to be here, um, Sharon. Marvellous, marvellous. And this is where we go to the disclaimer, so over to you. Okay, everyone, good afternoon. So as you know, when we are uh, presenting um, information around health, we want to make sure that we don't compromise anybody at all with any information that we share. So we just want to remind you that only a physician can diagnose, treat and prescribe for illnesses or diseases. And any information disclosed or discussed at the TTI Zoom talk show today and in the future, please remember it is for educational and informational purposes only. And please continue to seek professional medical advice from your general practitioner regarding any illness or disease you may be suffering from. So if you're suffering from any current uh, conditions or illnesses, yes, God's way is always the best way, but we also should be, we should be prudent and make sure we're sensible and wise. And please continue to seek any additional information from your physician. Although we're more than happy to help, more than happy to help you. Thank you, Jane. Thank you so much. And moving on. So for those of you, if it's your first time on TTI, which stands for True Temperance International, but you can see it's a bit of a mouthful. So if it's your first time on TTI, we have challenges that we set most weeks. And also we like to stay in touch with you because sometimes the challenges are a bit challenging. Um, and so we have Telegram groups that you can see the URL is there. So you can join that. You can do a screenshot. You can um, contact any of the team later if you aren't able to do the screenshot, or you can go back onto YouTube and play this back because this is a live recording. You'll be able to go back onto YouTube, just type in True Temperance International and you'll see the range of um, presentations that we have there. Go for this week's one, um, Vitamin C. Uh, if you type that in the search box, that will come up as well. True Temperance International Vitamin C and you'll be able to go through the presentation. So yes, we have a men's wellness group, a women's wellness group and a spiritual health group. With the Spiritual Health Group, we share devotionals, we share encouragement, prayer requests. And with the other groups, we help with health conditions and possibly like sharing recipes and support as the um, challenges go through. So moving on. Come apart and rest a while. Who would love to do that? 
I can see you all going, me, 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 me. Yes, definitely. And this is a workshop that it's the first of its kind that we're doing that we know of in the UK as a medical missionary health conference from the 29th of August to the, is it the 4th of September? That bit's hidden on my screen. It is, it is. Thank, thank you. And what would you like to tell us about this um, conference, Joan? Well, well you know, yes, Sharon and everyone uh, listening and watching. As you know, we've gone through um, the past few many months and, um, and we have decided as a team to look at a way to get you all to literally come apart and rest a while. What that actually means is that you're coming out of the you know, normal humdrum of life. Many of you have had quite a number of responsibilities, probably looking after loved ones, even yourself. You've had to work all the hours that God, you know, God has sent you. And we thought to ourselves, we've been doing this box presentation, so to speak, where we're just talking to you online um, and not able to communicate effectively enough. Yes, we know that many of our churches are, are now open, which is wonderful, um, but we thought we'd like to have some sort of a fellowship, a mini camp meeting, so to speak. So Come Apart and Rest a While is going to be held in the beautiful, beautiful um, countryside and hills and mountains of the country of Wales in Britain. And there, what you will come across um, and will be greeted by are live people. So we're not taking you all the way down there and then we're going to put you on, put our guests on a big screen. No, we will be there. You'll be able to shake our hands and we'll be able to share information with you face to face. We'll be able to fellowship with you. We're going to have a number of programs, but we're also excited to bring you workshops. And these are live workshops. There's not going to be any screens. Live people face to face and we will be presenting on things like physiotherapy, if you're interested in setting up your own sanitarium, how to set up a sanitarium. If you are interested in knowing how to cook simple meals, that's what we're going to be showing you as well. We're also going to have uh, Joanna Daniels, who's going to talk about disease and the mind. So we're not saying you're making up the disease. But we know that a lot of emotional issues can create diseases in our lives. We're also going to have Jackie Brown and her team from Scotland, who is actually going to go through a simple medical missionary hints and tips and guidance. We're going to have Lucille Fyfield Fyf from Manor House, who is going to talk about our body chemistry and the importance of knowing our body chemistry and what's actually happening uh, with our bodies. Um, and forgive me if I've missed any, anybody else. I'm just looking at the lineup, Pastor Sam Davis. You all know who Pastor Sam Davis is. He has been a presenter on TTI, very busy um, um, medical missionary. Um, and he is uh, going to be here from Spain. He will be here uh, at Wales. And also Pastor Conrad Vine will be here in person. So we're having many, many people here. Andre Crawford, uh, a wonderful young minister. He'll be here also. So we have a lot of wonderful people, a lot of people who are looking forward to seeing me there. So don't become complacent. We don't operate lastminute.com. I'm telling you, if you believe in lastminute.com, you will be disappointed. So make mm -hmm. sure you book your places. Bookings are coming in quite nicely. And it's wonderful for us to be able to speak to you by, by email or via the phone. And uh, many of you have said you're so excited at coming. Um, it's, it, to us, it's, we're very excited too. And we're looking forward to seeing you. So um, I could go on and on about this. And also, also just wanted to say that we will be offering therapies such as yeah. massages, steam saunas, um, foot baths, uh, back massage. And, uh, other th and other things. And so many other things. So, so please make sure that you book, come along, meet us all. We'd love to meet you all. Wonderful fellowship for seven days. Let me tell you something. You're not going to find anywhere in this country, probably the world, where you can get something for the prices on the fly. And for the sake of the Sabbath, I won't be saying it. It's visual. You can see it for yourself. So... Looking forward to your phone call and your email. Over to you, Sharon. Definitely. Thank you so much, Jean. Uh, Joan. I'll get your name right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joan. And so then I think the last promo we have on here is um, 
it's time to quit. So I just need to move this out of the way. This is a non-stop smoking program that's going to be held in Scotland, I believe. So yeah, another part of the United Kingdom. And this is a six-day residential program. It's coming up shortly on the from the start on the 16th of May to the 22nd. That's this year. And the details are there available on the poster for you. It's um, health presentations juicing, daily exercise, and many other things there that will, is there to help with um, stop smoking, quitting smoking. If you know anybody um, that you think would benefit from this, let them see the poster and, and find out if they would like to um, get on board, then their contact details are on there. There's a phone number for Louise and Mavis on the bottom of the slide. If you've missed it, go back onto YouTube and you can read off all the details there. And swiftly moving on. We are just going to say thank you for all your support coming on to True TTI week after week. And if it's your first time, you can see our details are there. If you wish to bless us with your financial support as well as your prayers and, and sharing the link with your fan, friends and family and even people that may be not that friendly to you, but they will be after they've learned so much more about their health. So thank you for that so much. I'm going to stop my share. And almost ready to hand over to um, Dr. Franco Taylor. But before he gets into his presentation, I have two questions for you, Dr. Franco. Yes. Just a quick one so that we can get to know a little bit more about you. OK, and a quick message as well in the chat. Just read that one. But yeah, Dr. Franco, a couple of weeks ago, we set a challenge for people, for our viewers to do two days. It was Louise Reed that set this challenge. Two days of a challenge. The first day was to do a uh, juicing, a juice cleanse in preparation for a detox. And the second day was to do uh, eat raw food. So two questions. Firstly, what is your favorite juice? Ah, good question. Um... I guess if you could say watermelon, it would probably be watermelon juice. Ooh, but uh, yeah, good. I like watermelon juice. Uh, that would probably be my, my favorite. Yeah, that would be my favorite. Okay, so, and then the second question. We know, I know you're a chef, and so you like food. You like to, um, to do things with food. And the raw challenge was, um, it could have been fruits, it could have been vegetables. So with regards to salads, What's your favorite salad ingredient and why? Good question. Uh, well, basically all leafy greens, uh, because your leafy greens, your cruciferous vegetables were the vegetables that God gave after the fall, after sin. And uh, the green vegetables have in them chlorophyll. And chlorophyll is identical in molecular structure to the blood. So man had completely lost it. I mean, he was, he was sick. He was destined to die. And God gave him the vegetables as what you might call a, a blood transfusion, okay? Because they were designed to heal the blood. So I don't have any particular one, but broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kale, uh, sweet peas, green, crisp spinach, all of that is loaded with um, calcium. Not only that, but vitamin C also, which is what we're going to talk about. So all green, cruciferous, uh, really, really rich green vegetables are my favorite. I put them all in my salad, all of them. Okay, okay, all right. So, and I was just holding up a piece of broccoli there. So I, I, see, it, I see it, I oh, see you it. Got it. You got good. it, you got it. That's good, Excellent. that's good. That's right, good. So at this point, we will um, go on to mute. So you'll hear a little bit more about the prom promotions at the end, but we don't have much time with Dr. Franco, so it's our yeah, time. Yeah, we we're going to have to. Got to make this work in a, in a short space here. So All what right. I'm going to do. So over to you then, and thank you okay. once again. Okay, somehow I clicked off. I don't know what happened there. Uh, do you still see me? We can see you definitely. Am, so you're I'm just not gonna... on the screen. I don't have any uh, control of screen. I don't see anything. I'm back to where I came in when I came in. I don't know what happened. Here. Do you want to leave and come back in then? I might need to do that because I am, uh, I see nothing. I, I don't see anything. I don't know okay. what happened. Let's see, maybe if I, 
Okay, I come this way. Let's see. Okay, I see you now. Let's see. Okay, I'm back. You're back. I don't know. I'm back. <laughs> okay. Thank you for those of you who prayed. Yeah, thank you for the prayer. We needed that. All right, let's see here. We're going to. Okay, let's see here. Okay. All right. Um, about me, real quick, like uh, I'm a medical missionary, health evangelist for 42 years. I uh, work with maybe 18,000 people in 42 years, lose weight, gain weight, high blood, diabetes, cancer, full-blown AIDS, even the COVID in the last uh, two years. We've worked with over 32 families with COVID, watched them get well within uh, eight to 14 days, in some cases, even three to four days. And uh, basically they just followed the eight prescriptions to health and a couple other formulas that we've been blessed to know how to put together in 42 years. But uh, that's pretty much what I am, just a health evangelist, uh, just trying to do what my elder brother, Jesus Christ did. And that was a lot more healing than he did preaching. So uh, the bottom line, when he healed them, they would say, why would a man like you do something like that for someone like me, then he would say, because it is written, my father has spoken. In other words, when he touched them where they needed to be touched in their infirmities, they asked him for a Bible study, okay? All right, uh, the eight prescriptions for health that uh, we're gonna move through. All right, uh, Exodus 15, 26 basically says, if you listen, if you keep all my commandments, all my statutes, all my judgments, I'll put none of the diseases upon you that I placed upon you, Jacob. So, the, the greatest healing prescription is to be obedient to God, okay? And then we also learned in Deuteronomy 28, 15, that if you did not keep all my statutes, commandments, that all these curses would come upon you. Back in those days, the, 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 the children were born with limbs missing, the calves uh, were deformed in the stall, the, the, the fruit and vegetables didn't produce the way it was supposed to, all because of disobedience. We know that worked because Adam and Eve who were, do, were destined to live forever, didn't. Adam lived to be 930 years. Why? Because he sinned. And on what platform? Appetite. He had appetitis. Not hepatitis, but appetitis. So the bottom line is uh, uh, bad eating, wrong eating, which is a part of disobedience, actually leads to sin, sickness, and disease, and death. Christ came to this earth. He lived. He died. He resurrected over a piece of fruit. You don't hear that from the pulpit, but it's just that simple because the word could not be broken. Somebody had to die if you ate it or touched it, they did. So again, there are other foods like the swine that he told us not to eat or touch that uh, people think that if they pray over it, they can eat it. Even the animals, God never intended for us to eat animals. Never, ever, ever. If that had been the case, there would have been uh, hot dog trees, hamburger bushes, and barbecue vines. So it wasn't there and it would have been microwave ovens and George Foreman grills in the garden. They weren't there. So animals wasn't the case. So again, Disease is the result, again, of disobeying the laws of God, both natural and spiritual. Uh, someone says, well, Dr. Franco, I've been told that uh, heredity is most of what's going on. My great-grandmother had high blood. My grandmother and my mother all had high blood, so therefore I'm destined to have it. No, that's not the case. Heredity might give you some weakness in your, in your genes, okay, but it's the lifestyle that does. So if you look at this real carefully, you're going to see heredity loads the gun. Well, watch this now. Did you see that bullet? Okay, lifestyle pulls the trigger. How you eat, live, drink, all that determines whether you're gonna really have to suffer from some predisposed weak gene that you might have, okay? So again, the Bible way for preservation and restoration of health. Uh, God gave this to me 40 years ago, the Bible way, best food in combinations, Genesis, uh, intake of plenty of water, uh, Ezekiel 4.11, being temperate, uh, Philippians 4, 5, lots of rest and sleep, exercise daily, wonderful sunshine, air fresh and clean, yield to God's will always. And we'll go through them so that you can see. The best food in combinations. I always talk about the best, not the only, but the best. And you're looking at the best food in combinations, fruits, nuts, grains, and vegetables. The original diet, when God created man, uh, the first words he told him was to be fruitful and multiply. The very second words were this. And why would he do it? This way, because he does everything what uh, uh, decently and in order. I've given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for me. Man's first meat, first food was fruit, nuts, grains. And then after sin, 
he added vegetables. So in Genesis 3.18, curse was the ground for my man's sake. and God added the vegetables. Why? Like I said a little earlier, man was then tainted. He was not going to live forever. His blood was tainted. It was not pure. And God gave him the vegetables as uh, a healing mechanism to heal the blood. We jumped out of the Bible and went to, uh, let's say, 1973, the Crohn's Colitis Foundation, the Cancer Foundation, uh, heart, diabetes, arthritis sclerosis, all of these different foundations said that if we ate a certain food, all the incidences of those diseases, including cancer and AIDS, would go away. What was that certain food? Fiber. What is fiber? Fruit, nuts, grains, and vegetables. So again, this is the superior diet, fruit, nuts, grains, and vegetables. Fiber helps to do what? Fight diseases, green leafy foods. There's some of them, but we just talked about it, so I'm going to skip that. Good sources of fiber, whole grains, vegetables, legumes, fruit, Common sources of fiber, uh, we're going to go past that. We don't have time to look at that today, but a host of foods uh, from the total vegan diet and the benefits of them that they have no cholesterol, low saturated fat, high fiber, zero animal protein, zero of the, the kind of iron that we get from these uh, vitamins that we're taking, rich in antioxidants, rich in folic acid and B6, and they promote wealth control. What's wrong with this picture? We are the only animals on the planet that drink another animal's milk. And uh, we'll go through and show you some of the milk sensitivity disorders, chronic fatigue, tension, headache, musculoskeletal pain, hyperactivity, bedwetting, aggravation of allergies and congestion, just all these things. Major childhood health concerns related to cow's milk, allergies, iron deficiency, lowered intelligence, milk sensitivities, early atherosclerosis, juvenile diabetes, acne, dental decay, even infectious disease. How about adults? Major adult health concerns related to using cow's milk, coronary artery disease. We're talking about butter fat in milk, folks. Cancer, neurologic disease, because of all the, 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 the things that we find from animals in their milk, and we put that into our bodies. Because if you think about it, most of the sicknesses we get, they come from animals, chicken pox, uh, cow diseases, uh, you, you name it, all these things that come from animals. Uh, neurologic diseases, that's brain stuff, uh, allergies, digestive problems, infectious diseases. And now we see diseases associated with a low fiber diet. That's an animal uh, sad diet, constipation, appendicitis, diverticular disease, hiatus, hernia, varicose veins, hemorrhoids, bowel cancer, colon, uh, colon polyps, heart disease, strokes, diabetes. There's no fiber, folks, in meat flesh, eggs, and cheese. The effects of cheese, allergies, constipation, neurotransmitters. Cheese should never be introduced into the stomach. Cheese is still more objectionable. It is wholly unfit for food. Now let's look at sugar, wanted for stealing. Sugar robs your body of B vitamins. Sugar contains no nutrients, but it requires nutrients, lots of energy to metabolize the sugar. Soft drinks are the single biggest source of refined sugar in the US. We go from sugar highs to sugar blues. It takes you up, then it drops you down. White sugar depletes the body of B vitamins necessary in the system. Uh, refined sugars and starches contain empty calories and literally no nutrients. Again, the scriptures tell us, blessed will be the land when thy princes eat in due season for strength. That's the glad diet and not for drunkenness, the sad diet. The glad diet is God's life activating diet. And the sad diet is the standard American diet. So we want to go from sad to glad. This is the standard American diet. You know it. You've seen it. Uh, white bread, ice cream, cake, candy, cookies, uh, uh, animal products, uh, all that stuff is loaded with nothing. Uh, God's life activating diet, of course, uh, low in fat, low in protein, high in nutrients necessary for the body and high in fiber, the glad diet. So. The only food categories that are not linked to any major disease, fruit, nuts, grains, and vegetables. Now, water. Ezekiel 411 tells us, thou shalt drink also water by measure. That's a command. And we said, if you keep all my commands, all my statutes, none of these diseases will come upon you. So let's look at it real quickly. Ezekiel 411, you all know the scripture. Uh, thou shalt drink also water by measure, the sixth part of an hen. From time to time shalt thou drink it. Break it down real quick with me. If God is simply saying you need a measured amount of water every day. 
How much? The sixth part of a hen. What's a hen? In Hebrew and Greek, we're talking about a bath of water, a bath of water. It's a gallon and a half. It's six quarts. Write that down, six quarts. So if six quarts is a hen, and it says to take one sixth of a hen, if a hen is six quarts, okay, I hope you can see my six quarts, and we're going to take one sixth of six, what is that? One quart. Then, so you've got a quart over, and then it says you drink it when? From time to time. So if you drink one quart one time, you come over here and drink it another time, how many times is that? Two. How many quarts is that? Two. How many glasses is that? Eight. How many glasses have the doctors been telling us to drink for the last 50 to 75 years? Eight glasses of water. I'm glad the man caught up, but God sent the word to me by the prophet Ezekiel over 4,500 years ago telling me to drink a minimum of eight glasses of water a day. But it could be more than that because from time to time, could be from time to time to time. The reason I say that is because an individual weighing 200 pounds and a person weighing 100 pounds, like a young lady, uh, you they wouldn't drink the same amount of water. It's like an automobile. You've got a Ford Excursion and a Ford Echo. The Ford Excursion is a huge vehicle. It uses a lot more water than a Ford Echo. Can you drive a Ford Excursion on Ford Echo water? No, why? Because it'll overheat, the hoses will blow up, the car will freeze, the engine will go dead. And uh, sort of what happens to you when you don't get enough water, your hoses swell up. That's called your veins and your arteries. If they pop, what do you have? You got a heart attack, an aneurysm, a stroke. Same thing. Your engine stops. Are y'all getting what I'm saying? What is it? A lack of enough water. So let's look at it. Let's go through it. Your body is between 70 and 80 percent water. You are what you drink. All of your bodily functions require water, circulatory system, assimilation, digestion, elimination, temperature control. Your brain is 75% water, heart 75, lungs 86%, kidneys 83, muscles 75, blood 83, your bones are even 26% water. You need water, folks. Kidneys, if you did not have kidneys, you would have to drink in excess of 800 glasses of water a day because your kidneys do the recycling of the water. Uh, again, the heart uh, circulates its five quarts of blood about every minute. This means that every day, the heart pumps about 8,000 quarts of water, which 2,000 goes through the kidneys. Most of this blood goes to nourish the kidney structures, the adrenals, and other surrounding tissues. 200 quarts of this 2,000 are passed through the 1.25 million microscopic filtering units called the glomeruli in each uh, uh, part of the kidney. However, only one and a half quarts of this amount is excreted as urine. The rest of the 200 quarts is reabsorbed, recirculated, and it goes through your body. So again, uh, you need uh, the other places that you lose water is in uh, uh, through the skin when you perspire and uh, through the stool and, of course, when you urinate. Cartilage between the cells. You hear people talking about bone on bone. Basically, it's because in most cases, they don't drink enough water. That cartilage is like a you've seen a water balloon that we throw and hit each other with. OK, but that water balloon does what if you mash it? It squeezes in. But it, or if you stuck a pin in it, it still would just a little tiny stream of water would come out, but it would still have its its its, its texture. But when you hit a balloon with nothing but air, it's gone. So what am I saying? The reason that most of us are having a problem with bone on bone, knees, hips, so forth, so on, is because we don't drink enough water. Again, if you don't drink enough water, the body will have to take it from somewhere else. It'll pull it from the blood. The blood will get thick. Your blood pressure will go up. It'll pull it from the bones. The bones will begin to, you have arthritis. It'll pull it from the liver. You'll start having skin problems and so forth from the skin. The colon, when that happens, all of the body functions begin to slow down. You become constipated. The brain suffers. The cells suffer. Why? Not enough water. Start each morning by drinking two glasses, 16 ounces of lukewarm, uh, pure water. Uh, that's a good way to start the day. Hydrotherapy, using water inside and outside. At the pool of Bethesda, the, the, the young man uh, literally uh, he said that every uh, at a certain season of the year, people who stepped into that water, an angel would stir up the water and they would be healed. That was nothing but just a plain old whirlpool, folks. I hope y'all are getting this. Bible in, Bible out. Uh, the natural way of doing things is the best way. Okay, being temperate. That means don't overdo alcohol, all these different things that you know are toxins. They, alcoholic beverages destroy the cells. Uh, coffee affects the functions of the cells also. Uh, beverages with caffeine, all of them to cloud the intellect. They benumb the energies. They excite the nervous system. Then later, they depress the body and exhaust the body. We said sugar high, sugar low. Look at this closely. Chocolate. 
is habit forming and causes asthma attacks, vomiting, itching mouth, abdominal pain, coughing again, clogged nose, itching hives, sores around. Powerful stuff. Look at this cloak. I want you to see something. Theobromine irritates the central nervous system. The additives that are in the coffee are required to mask the bitterness in the coffee, in the candy, or in the chocolate, uh, contains large amounts of sugar, and the sanitation standards over there in those overseas third world countries is horrible. I mean, all kinds of animal stuff gets into your chocolate. Look at this. Folks. The FDA, we call it the food defect action levels, okay? Uh, look at this. Visible or solid animal excrement, that's doo-doo, okay, that they find in the chocolate is okay as long as it does not exceed 10 milligrams per pound. That means you can also get 120 insect fragments per cup or two rodent hairs per cup. That's allowable because they can't get rid of it. You're talking about warehouses with wooden roofs, bats, roaches, animals, squirrels, all kinds of things up in there falling down in the chocolate. I'm serious, folks. This is a serious thing. Look at this. Thought we put this together for you so you could see something. It's called chocolate drops, okay? This is animals in the top of the roofs where all this chocolate is being made. I want you to just look. Their excreta, that's doo-doo, and their hairs literally fall in. And as long as it doesn't exceed 120 insect fragments in a cup or two rodent hairs per cup, it's okay. Hope y'all are getting that. Just one more time, concrete it into your head because everybody likes Snicker bars, now our laters, M&Ms, and so forth. I know I did. Chocolate coated donuts. Love it, love it, love it, love it. This is what's going on. The food defect action levels. As long as visible, solid animal excreta must not exceed 10. That means that if you had a box car and inside that box car you had a bathtub, that bathtub, that box car is full of chocolate. That bath tub could be full of insect fragments, body parts from animals, uh, doo doo. It could be full of that, and it would be okay because they can't stop it from being. Hopefully, y'all got what I'm saying. And it's powerful stuff. Let's move on. Lots of rest and sleep. The amount of sleep needed for good health is between 16 to 20 hours a day for a newborn baby, 10 to 12 for a young person. Uh, but once you get 40 of over, you only need about six or seven hours of sleep. Uh, the best sleep, of course, uh, if somebody told me once was in the <laughs> in the day in the nighttime. But uh, uh, getting sleep, the best six hours of sleep are from 9 p.m. to 6 a uh, 3 a.m. in the morning. Those six hours are the hours in which the moon has a gravitational pull on the body, sends the tide in, presses down. Have you ever seen a plant in the in, at night uh, about that tall, and you wake up the next morning and it's that tall? God does his thing at night. I mean, the serotonin in your body turns into melatonin. It puts you to sleep. And uh, the body just does all its repairs while you sleep. Rest is healing and gives the body a boost, overcoming infection, builds the immune system. The pineal gland synthesizes serotonin. And in the absence of light, it converts serotonin into melatonin to help you sleep. Uh, it is vain to rise up early and sit up late eating the bread of sorrows. God gives you sleep. The best rest, again, comes uh, if you make sure that you eat your last meal at least four hours before going to sleep, lost sleep cannot be recovered. You need to go to exercise daily. And I always ask, do you sleep in a dark room or in a uh, well-lit room? Of course, it's a dark room. A cool room or a hot room? Of course, it's a cool room. And a well-lit room or a dark room? A well, I'm sorry, a dark room, okay? That tells me you know how to sleep. I must walk today and tomorrow and the day after. God wants us to walk or uh, to exercise. He placed Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden to address it and to keep it. And uh, he blessed them to keep it. They had to actually work the garden. They had to weed it and so forth and so on. So he made them uh, uh, laborers. He made them farmers, even though they were perfect and were to live forever. So we need to get exercise. The best exercise, of course, is good brisk walking. It strengthens the bones, the ligaments, the muscles, the tissues. It helps the blood to flow. It lowers our resting rate, and uh, the heart doesn't have to do as much work when you're resting and sleeping. It charges the brain and the nerve cells. Uh, it helps us to lose weight. Uh, it energizes and exercises the body to the point where you're just uh, loaded with electricity, loaded with power, loaded with energy. Your mitochondria beat the way they're supposed to, giving you energy. It stimulates the endorphins which increase the threshold for pain and providing a relaxed sense of well-being. It helps to digest food. Uh, it helps promote, uh, promote intestinal activity. 
and therefore it reduces gas constipation, you know, the bloating, the burping, the gas, and so forth, flashes, and so forth. It also improves uh, uh, the blood sugar level. Your sugar reduces. The A1C goes down when you get exercise. Okay, wonderful sunshine. Uh, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings. Sunlight changes cholesterol in the skin to vitamin D. That's right. But I thought vitamin D came from milk. It does. Only if it's vitamin D enriched. That means they put it in there. Your true vitamin D comes from what? From the sun. 15 minutes a day uh, on the back of your hands and on your face gives you enough vitamin D uh, to go and be stored in the body uh, and, and used with, uh, along with calcium to help build strong bones, nails, hair, skin, so forth. Sunlight increases the oxygen levels in the blood. It stimulates the liver in all its functions. Uh, it helps the white blood count, it helps to build your immune system. Are you listening to me? And strengthens the natural killer cells, which are the ones that destroy all sickness, all disease, all microbes, all bacteria, all viruses, including uh, COVID, folks. I hope you're listening to me. Sunlight helps to prevent infection and kills germs. Uh, 15 minutes a day, like I say, on your face and hands is enough to give your daily requirement. How about oxygen? The number one oxygen, the number one uh, vitamin or mineral there is is oxygen. Why? Because uh, how long can you live without food? Uh, weeks. How long can you go without water? Uh, without water? Days. How long can you go without air? Uh, just moments, okay? So that's the most important. So important that uh, God breathed into man's nostrils a Coca-Cola and he became a living thing. No, no, no. We know. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The first thing he gave him, the first gift to give him life was oxygen. So we need oxygen. Oxygen cocktails, that's something that you can do. Breathe in through your nostrils, breathe out through your mouth, count to 10 going in, count to five going out. Smell the roses going in, and uh, you're blowing out the candles going out. Every cell in your body must breathe to stay alive, okay? The lungs contain 300 million air cells, handle over five quarts of blood per minute. Uh, they're constantly throwing off impurities. That's the uh, CO2 and so forth and bringing more oxygen in. Very, very important. The brain needs oxygen. 20 to 25 percent of the oxygen that goes into the blood actually goes to the brain. Uh, lack of oxygen at first affects the brain. That's why you start being feeling tired and you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. You can't think uh, all kinds of problems going on simply because of not getting enough air. It retards digestion. Uh, it destroys uh Bacterias, okay, oxygen destroys bacteria. Sickness, disease cannot live in a medium of oxygen. You put your oxygen together with glucose and it gives you energy. Cancer cells cannot live in oxygen. Just like frogs do not lay their eggs in uh, running water, they lay it in stagnant water. So if there's oxygen, that means the blood is flowing. Leviticus 17, 11 says the life of the flesh is in the blood. Good, fresh flowing blood loaded with uh, oxygen is gonna do what? Run off all sickness, all disease. Again, shallow breathing leads to fatigue, exhaustion, anemia, and depression, but the breathing cocktails that I just talked about will help change things. Uh, so again, uh, last of all, prayer. Okay, we need to yield to God's will always. You can't change the way you eat, change the way you walk, change the way you drink, uh, change the way you exercise, change the way you're going to sleep on time. You can't do any of these things without help from God. You need to pray and ask God. Because without that, what are you going to get? Just stress, folks. The mind and the body. Excuse me. One second. Call them back. I thought I'd turn that off. But again, uh, when, 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 when the mind is affected by fear, uh, anxiety, stress, it increases the heart rate. Uh, the blood vessels constrict. Fats are increased in the body. The immune system is weakened. Digestion stops. More nutrients are used up. Less waste are removed. Stress shuts down your digestive system. Uh, stress lowers the potassium and calcium in the body. body. It causes problems with the uh, adrenal glands. It creates emotional responses in the brain, disturbing the chemical balance of the neurotransmitters. As a result, our hormones, possibly even cancer promoters, are increased in the body. The immune system is reduced. Emotional stresses and disturbances cause all kinds of problems like atherosclerosis, arthritis, so forth. So what is, what is stress? Self-trust restricts every spiritual success. We're leaning on our own thing instead of leaning on God. But we've got to learn to find what? Rest in stress. There's a little puzzle there, okay? If you look in stress, you can pull out R-E-S-T. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and ye shall find rest, ye shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Take Christ into your lives and watch the stress go away, folks. Remember, health is a choice, not a chance. Again, best food and combinations, intake of plenty of water, be tempered, lots of rest and sleep, exercise daily, wonderful sunshine, air fresh and clean, yielding to God's will always. The Bible way, even at the beginning, God set forth for us to know what to do to stay alive and healthy for a long, long time. Those are the best eight doctors, folks. Health is a choice, not a chance. Health is a treasure. So uh, again, I, I'm, I've gotten used to doing with a little bit of time. I'm down to two minutes. And so just want to let you all know how much I appreciate the opportunity. If we get some of those off Sabbaths, I'll be able to stay a little bit longer with lots of information. Got 42 years worth of information for you folks. And I want to give it to you because I know that what you have put together is a platform to bring many, many, many people to God. And all I can do to support you to help with that, I want to do it. Thank you all so very, very much. I don't have time for questions today, but I pray for another opportunity. And God bless. Love you. Till the next time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Franco. We love you too. We love you too. And we're looking forward to the next time. In fact, Dr. Franco will be doing a series with us shortly. And we'll stay tuned and we'll let you know when. God bless you, Dr. Franco. And um, yeah, we're going to we're gonna um, touch on more on some of these topics, probably go a bit more into the vitamin C and the other minerals as well when you come back to us. Okay? Absolutely. Look forward to it. God bless you. Okay, so thank you. And thank you, everyone, for staying with us. We know it was quick. Um, but And we know you have questions, especially when it comes to the chocolate editions, the, the, the chocolate drops. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. You can imagine the kind of discussions we're going to be having when you go. I can there, imagine. So. I'm looking forward to it, I promise you. Well, it's God going bless. to be recorded. It's going to okay. be recorded, so you All never right. know. Okay. All right, God bless. God bless you too, Dr. Franco. Right, all right, all right. Okay, so that was a quick whistle-stop tour into the health doctor's uh, God's way, which he introduced to us uh, probably about, was it, four weeks ago, Edgar, when we saw Dr. Franco. Um, and unfortunately, he does have, he's, yeah, heavy demands. He's got other um, presentations to do, so we're unable to take questions. But we do have some medical missionaries on here, and Joan is definitely on here. And uh, I'm sure there's others on here. I think there's, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. So at this point, um, sorry for those of you who came late, but remember, we do have this recorded, so you will be able to come um, to go back and watch what you missed. And that will be going through YouTube. So if you go into YouTube, type True Temperance International Vitamin C, that will bring you to today's presentation. And um, I'm sure when he comes back, we can go a bit more into the vitamin side of things. Um, but if you go with the recommendations that was presented today, you will get a good supply of your nutrients that are necessary, your vitamins A to, I don't know if there's anything after K, maybe there is, um, but you'll get those. So Joan, would you um, be able to unmute and help us with any discussion questions? Because we're gonna ask people if they wish, they can raise their hands and we can unmute them. I don't know if there were any discussion questions in the chat. I'll just have a quick look. I didn't see any questions at all, um, Sharon. Okay, okay. The questions per se. Um, it was a, quite a bit of a whistle stop tour. It was very. Um, yes. Um, right, so um, do you have any comments on the chocolate drops? <laughs> you mean me personally? Yes. I've, I've heard it for a very long time. Uh, let Same me here. Same here. I, I, I have actually heard it for a very long time that um, 
chocolate, the way they make chocolate, it has to be, um, I think it has to be produced in a certain way, processed in a certain way, and then set in a certain way. But it yes. is set over nights. The beans, I believe the beans are dried out in um, under, un, under the sun. Yeah. The, the cocoa beans are dried out outside. Yeah. And anything can, any rodents, any insects, any... A uh, form of animal life, you know, bats, whatever, can run rummage through there and leave something behind. And it's so yeah. sad that the FDA, is it the FDA? The Food and Drug, yeah, yeah. That, that they allow so much rubbish to go in there. However, do we need chocolate? I think, I think the thing is with chocolate, Sharon, is that there are alternatives and and that is, I think, what people need to look at, are yeah. the alternatives. I know someone, they're not on today, but they make some lovely um, sweets and in inverted commas, but they're like little balls, they're carob balls mm. with nuts and coconut. And the and thing with chocolate is that it's so addictive as well. Lovely. Exactly. Sorry? And with dates and things like that, but it's oh, lovely. Yeah. You know, those are the nice alternatives. Um, so, so that's one thing I can I, th I can think of. Mm. A lot of, and then he also mentioned something about cheese at the beginning. And again, I know it's something that's not new to you, but it may be to some people um, because you know. In fact, I have a pizza being um, warmed up now, but there's no cheese on the top, and you're like, a piece with no cheese? Yep. And it doesn't even have a cheese. There are cheese alternatives, but this one has no cheese. You know, it doesn't have to have cheese. It's just um, tradition. It's just uh, custom that mm. we have certain things, and we think, yeah. can we break that? Yes, we can. We can break those common trends because we are looking for a healthier alternative. Okay. You know, I know that there's a book that I've read called "Give Them Something Better," and um, that's coming from the Bible, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Give them something better. Yes, yeah. There is always something better um, when you come into. Um, sugar laden foods and and fatty foods i mean and salts the amount of salts that there is in cheese mm. it's just crazy as well as the fat and the dairy products so yeah I, w I was actually just thinking also i know that uh you know um dr franco had to leave and so uh the the, the, the most natural thing or tempting thing to do would be to go into vitamin c but to, to be fair to him, he's going to come back and talk about it in more detail in the near future, isn't it, Sharon? Hopefully, yes. But we can still have a discussion on vitamin C because we can talk about the foods that are rich in vitamin C, the fruits, the... Um, uh, a lot of people go for supplements, and there may be questions on that as well, and um, what the vitamin C deficiency can lead to. Um, so we can talk a little bit about that um, if you're happy to. I know it's off the cuff. You haven't got a presentation in front of you. No, I haven't. But but off the top of my head, uh, lack of vitamin C causes scurvy. It can cause um, our cells not growing correctly. So you, you need vitamin C. It's an absorbic acid. And it is a, uh, I think it's water soluble, if I'm not mistaken. It's in a lot of citrus fruits. And you and vegetables, as as Doctor um, Taylor Franco, Franco mentioned. So it is vitally important to have vitamin C, and most people get their vitamin C from uh, supplements. So you can go into the store, you can buy some pills, vitamin C pills or or capsules, and then you know some of them open the capsules and they sprinkle vitamin C on their foods, and they think, well, that's sufficient. But actually, we will always. I know that Dr. Franco talks about vitamin C in the Bible. And I, I think that what it, where it was coming from was all um, uh, fruits, all sea bearing uh, fruits. Um, that's where you get your natural vitamin C from. It's far better to, to get your vitamin C from the fruits uh, or the foods that you eat rather than depending on vitamins because remember vitamins are highly processed. You mean the vitamin pills? The vitamin P. Uh, pills or the capsules are highly processed yeah so it's far better to get your vitamin c now i know that if we were to look at nature and when we think about uh anything that contains vitamin c naturally we say 
Okay. Yes, yeah. Red peppers. Absolutely. Red peppers are high in vitamin C. Um, if it's green, it's because it hasn't turned red yet. So I wouldn't advise people to be eating the green peppers. Uh, just hold your thought there, Joan. Now, um, you did mention all the seed bearing fruits. And a lot of times people think, yeah, but this is my salad item. But yet it is a fruit. Um, it's because it's seed bearing and it comes after the flower dies off, you have the pepper. So that's, right. that's the result of nature, really. Right. And then it is laden with seeds. Some people throw, scoop the seeds out and throw them away. What would you say about the um, pepper seeds? Would you, would you eat them? Uh, I, we've actually um, put them on paper towels. You can actually get, grow your own peppers just by taking the seeds out of them, the seeds out of your red peppers. You, you literally can do that. Yep. You can, if you cut the top off, the, the, so Sharon, can you show your, your pepper again? Okay, this is it's so you um, see, cut. You see that bit with the green bits, that, you know, the stalk? Yeah, that bit. If you slice it with the green stalk and you place it on a damp paper t uh, in water, in water, you can start to see the roots coming in and then just plant it back. You can actually grow your, your, um, your red peppers that way. Someone's asking in the chat, or I think they've made a statement, sprouting. Absolutely, sprouting is a great source of uh, vitamin C. Thank you very much, um, Samantha, Samantha yeah. and mm -hmm. other vitamins. Sprouting is amazing. And look, you know, we're living in a time where there, there, there is talk. I wouldn't say it's a rumor because it really is happening. I know that uh, Errol and I went to the supermarket the day before yesterday and I won't mention them because they're on YouTube and I don't want to give them some free advertising. But it's a big supermarket. And, um, and we were horrified at the fact that when we walked in, all the salad stuff had gone. The, the, you know, the crates turned upside down. No salad stuff. Uh, tomatoes. And we were all like, some of, the customers, some of us as customers in a daze, like, what happened? So there definitely is a less food let's say there's less food in the supermarket so for those of you who who uh would like to uh have all of your vitamin c and other vitamins uh, natural vitamins try the sprouting sprouting is amazing i've got some fenugreek waiting for me i've sprouted fenugreek uh, seeds you can literally sprout your seeds and get your garden uh vegetables that way so thanks for the reminder samantha now, going back to vitamin C, sometimes we say in nature, great, um, I know a great source of vitamin C, and we'll say that's lemons, isn't it? So we'll say lemons, grapefruits. So lemons and grapefruits, and Sharon showed the peppers, um, and other fruits, and of course vegetables. But uh, pine needles is out, and if you're blessed enough to live somewhere where there's pine, a pine tree, you will have a more vitamin C than lemon. So try to go out there and get your pine, your pine needles, your pine needles for, for your tea. It's interesting that you was comparing the um, vitamin C in lemons with um, peppers. I'm just reading in the book, uh, Encyclopedia of Foods and Their Healing Power. And it says here that, uh, without my glasses, um, peppers are the richest, are the richest of common foods in this vitamin. It's surpassed by rose hip, which, you know, for those of you who have your roses in your garden, your rose bush, you can actually get your rose hip, which is the bit that's left when the flowers die off. You see the little rose, the red bud, and you can use that to make a tea. Um, and uh, that's a rich, a very rich source of vitamin C. You can go on um, YouTube and, and have a look or Google to see how to make your rose hip tea. But that's something that you can use. You've got so much in your gardens, you'd be surprised. And then when it talks about lemon, it says red peppers provide almost four times as much vitamin C as lemons or oranges. Wow. So there you go. Yeah, there's a comment that Lorraine's made. Thanks, thanks Lorraine. Um, she said the same thing happened to her. She went to three supermarkets and didn't get any salad. So I think while we're on the subject and we've got um, we've got many of our friends and colleagues on here, um, I'm not going to uh, you know cause like a, a little um, 
for want of a better word in inverted commas, panic. But we really do need to start thinking about ways of making us growing our salads. And I know the best way to do it is through sprouting because all you need is a jar. All you need is a lid with a few holes in it. You put your seeds in there so you can put a, a half a cup of seeds in your jar and you don't have to go and buy these expensive sprouting jars at all. And so it could be an empty olive jar, you know, the ones you can get from one of these discount stores. And you put half a cup of your seeds, put water in it overnight, cover it down with a, a tea towel like it's in the dark. And then when you wake up in the morning, you drain off that water and then watch how these seeds start to sprout. And the taller the sprouts, the crunchier it is for you, the better it is. And I'm telling you, it's absolutely delicious and it contains so, me so many enzymes in there and vitamins and it's excellent. And uh, you've grown it, it's yours, you've grown it and you know where it came from. You can even sprout brine, uh, brown rice, brown basmati rice. Mm. You know, I've never tried that. Tea. Yeah, you can sprout that. If you if okay. you're adventurous, put some in a jar with water overnight, and then you can pour it off in the morning and watch it sprout. You can. I'm gonna try. I'm definitely gonna try that. Uh, just brown basmati. Brown basmati rice. You know the the grain those grains rice, the ones that people say is too. They want the easy cook rice or they want the, you know the yeah, rice. No, no, no. You want the whole. But I've cooked brown basmati rice, and it could be fluffy. I haven't sprouted it yet, Sharon. This okay. is the press, but I, I've been told you can. Okay, lovely. Like a very reliable source who loves sprouting. Okay. They you can actually sprout. They sprout brown basmati rice. I'm going to go for it. I'm yeah, going to go, go for it. it. Go for it. I do enjoy sprouting. And it's something that the whole family can get involved in, especially if you've got young children and you're getting quick results, you can do that. I mean, a lot of children, they know about growing crest, um, crest yeah. seeds, but sprouting is another way of educating your children. And if you're home educators, it's a wonderful thing you can do. Even if you're not home educators, exactly. it's still a great thing you can do, not just with the children. Some of the senior folk in, among, amongst our midst, you know, may not be used to sprouting. Yeah. Again, that's something that they could do. But you know, when you're talking about growing your own um, vegetables, because yeah. you know, whatever's going on in the supermarkets um one thing i'd love to do is if i have spring onions okay i've purchased some spring onions and then you know you've got the little bit at the bottom with the roots which starts to grow even before you're ready to eat them i don't chop up the roots i'll have all the leafy bit and then i'll get to you know maybe there's about that amount left and then i'll just put that in the soil you don't even have to dig you just put it in the soil and it just literally maybe that's where the word spring onions come from it just springs yeah, back up again and you will have a constant supply of spring onions okay. it, it, it works every time it really Perfect. does so so, then, so here's the challenge then so so we know that dr frank is going to talk about vitamin c at a later uh, date in the bible so what can we do, all of us now, all of us together, let's just have a chat. You know, like when you hang around after church and you all want to stand and chat, let's have that moment here. How can we make sure that we have a good source of vitamin C, knowing that a food shortage is coming? We know it's coming because we've seen it in many supermarkets. You know, we, we saw it uh, a couple of months ago, um, even in Wales where we shop. And we're kind of thinking, what's going on? Where's all the food going? So if we want our regular source of vitamin C, everyone, who's mm -hmm. on this side, I want you to come up with some ideas. How can we make sure that we can continue to have a regular source of vitamin C? The lemons, I've noticed now that when, I, when we purchase lemons or grapefruits, I'm trying to see if I can find one. It's almost, it's almost as if it's, it, it's, at, it's almost sell by date because it's a bit squidier than normal. It's not firm. So I'm just thinking to myself, okay, we don't have grapefruits. We don't have oranges or it's very low, very low in supply. We don't have lemons. Can anyone tell us how are we gonna get our regular source of vitamin C? No red peppers, because that happened to us the uh, day before yesterday. There was nothing there. We were astounded, we couldn't believe it. And this is actually, you know, we're all uh, visiting with family. So how are we gonna get it? Anyone wants to tell us? Who wants to, who wants to advise? Who wants to advise? There's, and there's a long list of fruits 
the, um, vegetables that are high in vitamin C, we can go into that. But I do like this idea, Joan. So yeah, let's um, let's um, have a brainstorm. Oh, you can't unmute. Oh, I'm really sorry about that. Uh, Charlene, are you able to? Oh, wait, let me just see. I'll do it. Allow, allow. Yep, yeah, it is. Anyone okay. want to advise? How are we going to get our regular source of vitamin C? And I, I also don't think I don't, don't let me leave this one. Um, if you can explain to people because it's an it's an el element that we don't have commonly, exactly what is scurvy. But let's get this let's get this ball rolling. So Alex, yes. How would you get your vitamin C or Alex's device and Simbi? Can you, can, are you able to speak? Oh no, you're, you're muted. Okay, so is there anybody else? Are you able to unmute now? Okay. Are you still unable to unmute? I you should be able to unmute. Okay, yeah, Samantha, yeah. yes. Um, I was, I'm not sure about, hi. I think I would say hi, I put my camera. Um, yeah, I was just thinking about how we could actually be more prepared. So things like canning and, you know, making up your own jars and preserving things so you can store those for a later date. Um, but in terms of what else we can do in terms of getting vitamin C um, and being prepared for the, the shortages that we are already seeing, I'm not sure. I think it's a bit more complex, really, isn't it? Because... Yeah, you know, you know something, Samantha. I know that um, there are people, people I know personally, who have a dehydrator. Mm. So they've got a dehydrator, and so you know when you buy all your fruits, and then sometimes it looks as if they're starting to go off or starting yeah. to get a bit more. So what they, I don't know if she's on actually, but what she's done, she takes the pears, she slices them up, the apples, she slices them up and she dehydrates them and mm -hmm. so there you and, and remember when you when you dehydrate something it becomes you, you you're actually locking in yeah at you're that time in the, the the minerals the vitamins and also the water yeah uh, and and so and so that's one way of preserving Definitely. your vitamin c source that's one thing i can think yeah. of in terms Definitely. of that. we talked about canning i know that uh, canning there there are quite a number of uh, videos out there in youtube land where it shows yeah. you literally how to if you grow potatoes supposing you grow your own little carrots and potatoes and you've got so many of them you, you 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 don't want them to get go to waste you can actually can your potatoes or your 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 uh, carrots or you can um, what is it is it not parboil boil but you can get them into uh, these ziplap not bags and put them in the freezer. Yeah, so yeah. there are a number of things that you can do, and literally all of us are guilty of it. It's the time factor, you That's know, it. thinking about it and saying, right, it's just quicker to throw things away. But actually, and and food shortage is coming, uh, folks. I'm I'm telling you, it is on its way. We're we're seeing, mm -hmm. we're seeing it in full and living colour in many parts of the U United Kingdom where you are. Um, so yes, it's good to grow our own. And we need to. Uh, now is the time. It's April, I think. You can start. You can plant for the um, autumn, which is uh, September, September, October. Uh, but also, I think we need to start thinking of um, of uh, purchasing things that have more of a shelf life. And like I said before, I'm not saying this to kind of cause a panic because oh my gosh, uh, Joan said on TTI that you know there's going to be a food shortage. Actually, if you if you can see for yourself, I'm sure you know when you visit the supermarkets that a lot of foods are not on the shelves anymore. Or if they're on, it's gone. Uh, people are waking up very early in the morning now to go to the supermarket just so they can get their hands on a lot of the salads. Or if you get some of the fruits, the fruits seem to have passed their sell-by dates mm -hmm. and it's not lasting as long when you take them home. I don't know if you've noticed that, Sharon, but you take your fruit home and uh, it doesn't seem to last as long as it normally does. So, you know, uh, something's happening. And we have to be wise, we have to be wise. So someone raised the hand. We have Jonathan with a hand oh, raised. Jonathan. Yes, Thank yes. you for that, Samantha. And yes, I do like the Thank idea you, of the dehydrator because normally when you warm things up, you're going to de you're going to mm. destroy some of the vitamins. But by um, 
Yeah. But by doing what you said with the dehydrator, you lock it in. So that's dehydrate it. And also dehydrate. If you dehydrate your dates, dry, dry, dry and pulverize okay. it, you have created your own sugar, natural sugar, date sugar. And if you do your, your vitamin, your um, kiwis, because they are very high kiwi. Oh, food, yes. Vitamin C. So if you Full can do that, mm -hmm. that would be wonderful. Absolutely. Yes. OK, this so we have. Oh. Um, Two someone. people, well, someone yeah. with their physical hand up, Gloria and Jonathan. We'll take Jonathan first and then we'll go over to Gloria. Yeah. Is that okay. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, um, I've just, Jonathan. I just came outside um, to share a little information with you guys as I heard you talking. So I'm standing here against a rose tree or the rose tree or the rose bush. And on it, you can see some dry um rose from last year um these are the ones that we didn't pick but just a little story in december um myself and the kids we came outside and we harvest what was there and i've made a syrup out of it so you can see here. and that's how we preserve our vitamin c now i know many people are going to ask me for the rest um for this syrup but if you if if you want to get the rest of it in, in Wales. I experienced with this, the, having the, the syrup, um, in a few weeks ago, um, my whole family came down sick and um, this was very helpful. Um, my father-in-law, he had the cough um, and it was really, really bad, really bad through the night. And um, one teaspoon of this in minutes, it, it, it just stopped. Amen. And that's what I want with you guys. Amen. Thank Testify. you. Thank, Thank you. you for that, Jonathan. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I do like the taste of rosehip tea. I mean, I've made uh, made it with the yellow roses that we've got at the front of our house, and it's really nice. Really nice. Hi, Synth. Um, hi, Synth in the chat. She says, saving all your seeds and as you go, dehydration and freezing. Yes, absolutely. Hi, Synth. Sammy also great. says, eat more fruits for vitamin C. Veg to have vegetable smoothies, mm -hmm. um, dried fruit, have frozen fruit. And he says more herbal teas, moringa. That is so high. That, that seed is just oh, amazing. That got me started. Sorry, Gloria. Time right. to There's one thing. There's one. I've just remembered, everyone, please, please, please. It's foraging season. Yes. Do not let it get to July and you have not, do not forage in July or August. That's it. It's okay. over. Forage for your herbs now and the best source of vitamin a b c d e and k is stinging nettle they Get are coming up i have seen them stinging nettle. when i've been for my walks the, the, i was saying to one of my friends even just last week look at this new baby stinging nettle leaves and he was saying the chlorophyll the chlorophyll the chlorophyll there is blood. so much there for us blood. okay so i am gonna have to put on some gloves and that if you do get stung by the stinging nettles don't forget you can use tea tree oil and help to ease back the sting or duck leaf duck leaf and i remember remember um brother freud said he says when there's a food shortage there's no more food he says eat grass Mm -hmm. Eat grass and King Nebuchadnezzar did it, <laughs> <laughs> and he came to his senses. <laughs> What's in the grass? What's in the grass, Sharon? You got red oh, clover, so red clover, yellow duck, burdock, singing yeah. nettle. You got Sorry, all Sharon. those in the grass. Yes, in Gloria. Gloria, <laughs> Gloria yeah. over to you. Thank you for okay. your patience. Um, and before you speak, can you let us know where you're joining us from, Gloria? My home. From England. <laughs> okay. Your home, England. Thank yes, you. Yes, yes. In Streatham. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I've got um, an, an allotment. <clears throat> and uh, we are talking about the same thing that that brother was talking about, the, the uh, rose hip syrup, the rose hips, you know. And I really look forward to that in the summertime to pick them and I eat them because they're like big grapes. They're really huge. <coughs> and then I make the, some bottles of these. I make the, the oh. just like a jam with them. So I just <coughs> add nice. them in the freeze until I have in the fridge until I have them out. Take all the little thing and then just get my bottles, sterilize the bottle for two hours, 
and then I, I just boil them a little, put them in a the bottle, cover them again, and then sterilize them again for 20 minutes. And this is here on the bottle. You can't open the cover. It's really nice. safe. You could see your cover is sinking. And then you can use this for anything. You can nice. put it on your sandwiches. You can put it on your cereal. You can put it on everything. Nice one. That's but nice, next, But next week, when you, have, when you have, maybe this week, I can send some things that I did that are done to show you from my allotment what I have done and everything like that. So give people an idea. Please do. Of some of the things, yeah. And, and I'll tell you something. Allotments are amazing. It's like you've got your own little farmyard. Oh, it's wonderful. You know, I know that uh, during during the lockdowns, people were allowed to go to their allotments, and some people they you know they took like the beach chair, mm -hmm. <laughs> they took the radio. They just made it such a like a little heaven. Mm -hmm. Oh, allotments are amazing. My father used to have an allotment. You know, yeah, very therapeutic. Very therapeutic. God bless you, Gloria, for that. Thank you. Thank Yvonne, you. raise their hand. Before Yvonne speaks, um, just, Gloria, you reminded me, next week, TTI, we're having a break, so we're going to be off air next week, but we still have the groups, so Gloria, if there's anything you wish to share with us, you can um, share it with us on the groups, we'll look forward to hearing from you, sure. and, um, uh, and yes, you can, you, you, you're more than welcome to come on the following week, which mm -hmm. will be the second, the first week in... Uh, yes it's, uh, it's going to be me actually and i'll tell you this do you want me to tell go. them what, this, what i'm going to be talking about go on then sorry who's got their hand raised uh, <laughs> yvonne. Yvonne, yvonne sorry yvonne i'm just gate crashing here yeah, um, that's all right <laughs> in two weeks i'm going to be talking about the necessity of touch and that is something we don't think about, but I'm going to be talking about the necessity of touch and going into the science of it. Money. And I'm telling you, it is Let's something that we have forgotten. There is absolutely no way someone can be healed or feel the sense of healing and love and closeness and bonding without touch. So look forward to, I'm looking forward to sharing that with you all in two weeks. Oh, I'm looking forward to that one too. Yeah. I, I, oh, yes. I just love a back massage. But anyway, <laughs> I'm sure it's more than that. It's more than that. <laughs> it is, it is. I love my feet being massaged too, but anyway, that's <laughs> too, much, too much information. Okay. Thank you, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much um, for that, um, for, for your input, Gloria, Sister Gloria. Thank Wonderful. you, Gloria. And uh, hopefully we'll see you sometime. I used to live in Streatham, so you never know. Maybe I do know you. Hey, pardon? Maybe I do know you. I used to of live course, in I know you. I know you for many years. Oh, well, there you go then. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> okay. Yvonne? <laughs> yeah, I just want to ask Sister Gloria what is in that rose thing that you do. Oh, wait, okay. If you add Nothing. anything else to it. Yeah, in, you mean in the bottle what I put yeah. in it? Yeah, did you add Nothing. anything? Nothing at all. Just put it in the pan. I put a little bit of, of water, boil the water and put it in there and let it boil down itself and nothing else. That's oh. all. And then put it in the sterilized bottle and then put it again to make sure it's double sterilized so it can last. And I made a few bottles of it and this is the last one here left. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Not No sugar, nothing, nothing at all. Just what the, what the taste is clean. like? Pardon? What the taste is like? Um, I would say it's something like an apricot sort of a way. It's it's it's, oh, it's okay. thick. It's very it's thickish like because you know the skin and everything like that went in. Take off the yeah. seeds. There's some really prickly things inside, so you must take out all that seeds and you know things inside of it. And, yeah. and then and then do it. That's what how I did mine. I didn't put the seeds in because sometimes it's got a, a little prickly thing and you've got to be careful with the throat, you know. So you need to yeah. take them out and wash them and then and boil them and then put them in your bottle. That's it. Very right. good. I've got to roast in my garden. Yeah, you have to wait until the summertime when they're really nice and ripe, you know? Yeah. Okay, okay. thank you. For thank that. you. And if you can do that, put that in writing, Gloria, that would be wonderful as well. I, I know I'm making work for you, but. Um, yeah, but that's, that's all right. But because I'm, because you know me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that's it's easy, it's easy, yeah. Come on, come. Yeah. Okay. Wait, 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 you know, I think in Britain, we don't appreciate how blessed we are with natural um, herbs 
and um, you know what, what we could see as weed trees growing. We're we're very blessed because we could literally survive by the grace of God without having to go out and get you know exotic uh, fruits. You know what I mean when they when they're low in supply, we can still survive. Sure I, I mean, someone said that we can get our vitamin C from the sun. The sun is a very is a healing power anyway in itself, mm -hmm. and so we can actually get many of the things we need from from the sun. But God has given us all of this, Sharon. All of this God has given us. So the rosehip bush, the hawthornberry tree, the the singing nettle, the cleavers, the God, the I remember the elderberries. The elderberries, the elderberries, elderflowers. Yep. I mean, God has provided so many things. You literally don't have to plant them; they just come up. So we are blessed, you know, in many ways. And if you are, we did do something about elderberries last uh, last summer or last yeah. um, springtime, and uh, we um, showed. To tell, told people how they can make the tea from the elderberry and when's the best time to pick it etc so look out for them they are there now we do have an i think there was another hand but before we go into that i'm just going to say a little thing about moringa um why it says this 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 is from a website that says when moringa is better than anything else five times when it's better than anything else i think this is going with the leaf the moringa leaf when it's powdered down so we talk about protein how do we get our protein you get it from your green leafy vegetables moringa is has four times more, more protein than eggs in terms of your vitamin a and then you know people say eat your carrots it's good for your eyes etc the retinol it has four times more vitamin a than carrots in terms of banana, the potassium that's good for your heart, it has three times more potassium than bananas. In terms of the calcium that people say uh, drink milk, it's not the best place to get your calcium from at all. Mm. At all. Well, your moringa is going to have four times more calcium than milk. In terms of your vitamin C, it's seven times more vitamin C than oranges. And in terms of your fiber, four times more fiber than oats. So there is so many benefits that are there in Moringa. So if you have access to, and that was the leaf. I mean, you, we know that you can use the roots, the leaf and the seeds. Um, the whole Moringa is great for you, but, um, but that's just promoting. Uh, you know, go back to the vitamin C, seven times more vitamin C than oranges. Wow. And that's on a website for, uh, on the internet, basically. So you there can, is something that crossed my mind though, you know, um, in one of her writings, I know Ellen, EGW, Ellen White said that we really should be sourcing the fruits and the vegetables that are native to that particular country. So the, the fruits, the vegetables and the herbs. What do you say about that, Sharon? Because that, that is something that sprung to mind. And right now, you know, this is what I've got in front of me. What is that? That looks like uh, papaya. Yeah, I was going to say pawpaw. Right, so I know, it, or pawpaw. It doesn't grow in, this does not, and great source of vitamin C as well as other uh, vitamins, but this does not grow in in Britain. So if we can't get our hands on this, because there is going to be, there, there, there are issues with um, storage and, uh, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Trade. Uh, uh, when you import importation importing so i can't get that now this is something else that doesn't grow in britain vitamin c again can't get that there's something else i bet you're proud of me i bet you're wondering where all these fruits are. it's actually at shirley's and jonathan's by the way and this one is is um cantaloupe, cantaloupe. <laughs> Did you read the label? I did. I forgot. <laughs> I got a brain freeze. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> so if we can't get... Oh, and another one. Pomegranate. Oh, pomegranate. Oh, yeah. So if all of these things we can't get hold of in Britain, we need to start thinking about the natural sources that God has given us in Britain. Well, you did say we can grow our own red peppers. We, we and, can grow, yeah, uh, red black red. current is very high. Well, it's high, but okay, we can't get it here. But those of you in, viewing us from South Africa, because remember, we are international. We have viewers from all over. 
So perhaps some of you from a, who are in other parts of the world, you can tell us where you get your vitamin C from as well. But yeah, guava is high and um, black currant. I don't like the taste of black currant. It's quite bitter, but yeah. it's medicine. Absolutely. It's medicine and it doesn't always have to taste wonderful. Yeah. Uh, because we, we're so used to um, activating the sweet part of our taste buds. But there's the bitter, there's the sour, and then there's the, what is it, sweet, bitter, sour, and the salty. Yeah, thank you, Nathan. Right, Sharon's gone. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, my, my, my power my power died on my um okay. my laptop but thankfully my phone is still here that's another thing we have to prepare for not getting any power <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe we can use the bit of the the sunshine to, to harness the um yeah solar sunlight, sunlight energy what do you call sunlight energy solar, solar. energy solar, solar energy. power yes okay so, Right, let me just mute a minute. So any any input from our um, lovely viewers out there? Any input regarding what we're actually discussing in terms of vitamin C and natural sort natural uh, sources of vitamin C, especially here in the United Kingdom? Any comments? What are your comments about not being able to, or we should actually be using what is native to this country rather than using a lot of the uh, fruits and vegetables that are native to other countries. Any comments on that? So I'm hearing a lot about Gloria. Hello. So, oh yes, hi, yes. Uh, hi, hi, my name is Carl. Um, hi Carl. Yeah, um, I was listening to um, a Dr. Mercola, a Dr. Joseph Mercola, today and he was talking about um, vitamin D, um, how highly, highly, highly beneficial yeah. vitamin D is to the body. And he, what he was, it was explaining was that it's far, far, far better to be getting it from sunlight than any kind of supplement. Um, and he was talking about, um, uh, uh, I think it's, uh, the the red light the 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 I think it's infrared okay. red light mm -hmm. and he was saying that like something like forty percent of the sunlight is this infrared light okay. that is also highly beneficial I don't know what you guys think about okay. that so so when he was talking about the infrared is he talking about it as a um, something that we can actually get and right. use if we don't have enough sun sunlight. What he what he was saying was a lot of these salons that um, have the like sunbeds, yeah, um, they don't produce the right kind of light, yeah. Um, and he was saying, I think it's the the near um, infrared that is the highly beneficial light, whereas a lot of the sunbeds do the the um, the lower band the the um, far further away from the red the really red light um, so, yeah the fur it's called the fir, uh, fir uh, far infrared so the yes. far infrared is the one where I, i've seen uh, an infrared lamp and it's got something on it so you don't yeah. get the full exposure of the actual infrared uh, I think okay. that's, that's the far infrared yes and then you're talking about the near infrared is where Near you infrared. have the actual red glow. Yes. So you've got the actual red glow. And a lot. the reason why a lot of the silence don't do it is because they're afraid of uh, litigation in case the customer uh, becomes burned uh, quite quickly, if you understand what I'm saying. So they, okay. they, I think it's a, a board standard uh, requirement that they do not use the near infrared. But I understand what you're saying because, uh, Carl, because I know that a, a few years back, a medical missionary mentioned that, who's doing some training, mentioned that if you can't, it, it, because we don't get enough of the sun, 
in the United Kingdom, you know, we don't really get constant sunshine uh, like other countries do. Yeah. They actually yeah. suggested the same thing, Carl. They, they suggested the same thing. Uh, yeah. Purchase one of these infrared uh, lamps and sit under them for about uh, 15, maybe up to half an hour, and you'll get the feeling of the sun. Okay. The okay. Yeah. I've heard yeah. about Yeah. He, he was saying the alternative was to move to a, a nicer country where, where the climate is good. Carl, well, if we all did that, then Britain would be empty. <laughs> nobody, nobody would be in the factories. Nobody would be doing anything. Yeah. I'm telling you, it would be just desolate. Yeah. Somebody has to stay and do yeah. work. I can see people. <laughs> it's good for our health, is what he was saying. <laughs> so we can, we can actually, we can actually, um, we can actually get those infrared lamps. I mean, I, yes. I have yes. one. I have one and uh, we use it a lot for, for therapy. So if someone's not well, as soon as you, um, if you put it over their body, especially if it's the liver, the pancreas, etc., they actually start to feel better because there's a, a lovely um, constant warmth that just penetrates. Yes. Penetrates the cells. Those are the ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. Thank you for that. That's Thank great. You for okay. Thank that you. Up. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Excellent. Because I know we've we've got some testimonies of individuals as well. We've done um with oh that's not a good angle. <laughs> Sorry. We've done some um some therapies with individuals using the infrared lamp, and the testimonies came back within within 20 minutes of using it, within half an hour of using it people were saying how much better they were, especially when we were in Manchester with the um, medical missionary course, isn't yeah, it, there was some, Yeah, there was someone who, uh, uh, we did a, a, a liver fermentation and then put the lamp on them. And uh, they, they really felt a lot better for it. Yeah. Um, I do, I mean, listen, you know, you're talking to, Carl is talking to the converted here because- yeah. Definitely. You know, I, I love my infrared lamp. I, I hands down love it. And I know other people have benefited when they've, when they've uh, purchased their own. So if you want a lovely warmth that puts you to sleep, because, you know, when we go out into the sun, what do we do? People are on the beach or they're sitting in their, in their garden. They start to feel drowsy, don't they, naturally? And the reason why is because the beautiful rays of the sun is warming your body but it's just giving you that wonderful uh, circulation, balanced circulation, which is what the infrared does. So, you know, the blood is going around, it's, it's circulating your blood, it's penetrating your cells, and uh, that's the same effect you'll get from the infrared uh, lamp that Carl mentioned. Yeah, and Juliet was saying it does help with um, taking the treatments deeper. It helps to penetrate the benefits of the treatment. But one thing I would say um, is you mentioned about uh, it helps to fall asleep. It does. And so therefore, the warning is if you are using an infrared lamp, you do need to have somebody with you so that you um, yeah. so that you don't just fall asleep and burn. You know, and it, yeah. it, it, does help, it does aid restful sleep, but you might be too far gone asleep. So you, if you are using it, have somebody with you who's able to monitor you and the lamp and the heat yeah um, all right Lorraine thank you for joining us yeah she's got to go but she's enjoying the chat she said she enjoyed the chat Tina's got her hand up thank you yeah just um as Sharon was saying I was thinking about it because that actually happened to me with the infrared lamp I told Chris about this just today at mm -hmm. church that like I fell asleep with it on and I woke up to a smoldering sort of um I smelt something and felt something smoldering Mercy. and this was me this was me in bed I had this bright idea to use it, you know, um, before I went to bed. And I woke up to my duvet, it had burnt through my duvet co cover and started burning the duvet. Yeah. So, yes, that's, that's a serious warning. Yes, Not thank you, Tina. Yeah, make sure someone's there with you. And whilst I'm here, um, vitamin C with bioflavonoids, is that a thing? Because I tend to buy my supplements with, with that. I went to this Barbara O'Neill thing some years back and um, she spoke about vit vitamin C with bioflavonoids, for example, in an okay. orange, the white bit of the orange is where the bioflavonoids are. So 
when I eat my orange now, I tend to just, you know, eat it with the, the white bit as well. The rind, yeah. Yeah, not the I, rind, but the, the, the bit rind, before the, the rind. Fleshy bit. Yeah, the fleshy bit. The, the white bit that's just yeah. below the rind. I yeah. think that's the thing. I didn't even know there was anything in it. So I just thought I'd mention that as well. There's pectin in there, you know. Really? Okay. Yeah, there's pectin in in those um in the in the, the white bit of the oranges and the grapefruits. There is pectin. And it's pectin. also it's also good for your um for your uh you know when you get furrowed up of the arteries. Yeah, the pith. Yeah. Thank you, Samantha. When you get thrown of the thrown up of the arteries, it helps to clear and unblock the arteries as well. So that's it's yeah. very good for that. Someone did mention, sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> Someone also mentioned in the chat about the absorption of vitamin C, which I think is very important to yes. mention. And that is you, you need to take some iron with your vitamin C. I'm not saying you have your leaves and your um, oranges and, 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 and the other fruit, the kiwi all at the same time. But you do have some leafy vegetables, which like we mentioned about the moringa, which is high in vitamin C. But if you are going to have um some vitamin c you do need to make sure that your body is able to absorb it so make sure you have your green leafy vegetables so that you get your iron in your system and then at another meal you would have your vitamin c so then there's iron that's in your body and you can absorb what you're partaking of and there are some vitamin c uh, supplements that you if you take it if you take too much of it you can actually become acidic so everything in regulation, far better to get it from your fruits and vegetables uh, is, is my recommendation. Going back to what Tina said, um, when you're using the infrared lamp, <clears throat> legally speaking, it has to be at least 12 inches away from the body and no closer than that. I would say 13 inches, um, simply j just so that you're, it's not too close to your, um, your body or any surface. And also put an alarm on that is what uh, I mean, I normally don't um, use it on anyone unless I'm there with them. Um, but but make sure you have an alarm. Um, there are some that actually come with an alarm, but those are the those are the far infrared that Carl was referring to. So the, the ones that are the near infrareds, which is what we use, uh, they're the ones that you really have to be careful of how you use it. The far infrared ones, they come with some of them come with timers so that at least um, it's safe. It's safe. And I think that's what a lot of the salons use to avoid any injury. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Now, Tina, I'm not sure if your hand is still up from a previous, from, from your comments, or if you've got another thing to share. No, it's the same one. Sorry. Um, let me lower Same my hand. hand. That's <laughs> okay. it. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Right. So... Uh, I think yeah. we can come close to wrapping up unless there's many more comments or I, I think I think I think the one about preparation um, into when I say preparation right now please go out and forage so that at least you have the herbs in your home for your family for this coming winter we're not we don't know what's um, what's uh, coming in terms of uh, more pestilences etc but please try and, uh, and forage, make, make good use of the foraging so at least you can dry your herbs and you've got literally, you know, medicine in your, in your home. Medicine in your home to look after yourself and your family and loved ones. Infrared to buy. Yeah, mm. chance. You know, let me tell you something. I remember when we started talking about infrared in this country, um, when we started doing medical missionary trainings from 2012. Do you remember, Sharon? And as we were talking about infrareds, I think Tina might remember, as we were talking about the benefits of infrared, all of a sudden uh, there seemed to be a lot of people uh, purchasing them. And now, um, certainly the one that I have, very difficult to get hold of, so you've got other ones on the market. So I, I can't specifically say, Chance, which one to purchase, but I would actually leave it to you to, to purchase it. But a lot of them have gone up in price. Um, but once you have it, they're very, very beneficial. Very, very beneficial. They have to be at least, at least 275 watts and above, no less than that for it to be effective. 
Now, that's all I can say. Make sure that at least 275 watts and above for it to be uh, effective. That's that's really what I can uh, recommend. Okay, so there's a question saying, does iron need vitamin C for absorption? I, it's the other way around. The vitamin C requires iron for absorption unless you can correct me on if i'm mis no. if i'm incorrect but as no. far as i'm aware it's the vitamin c that requires iron for absorption you know we're we're, we're asking these you know the only time we really should be using vitamins is when we really can't get it from our food source or it's very difficult or we depleted if you're depleted yes 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 get the vitamins to bring up the levels, your, your mineral uh, levels um, and your vitamin levels. But normally I don't say to people, uh, you know, live off, live off um, supplements, especially vitamin C, like I said before, can make you acidic. So it can go the other way. You don't want that, you know, too much of that. Um, so it's always best to get it naturally from your, try your best to get it from your foods. Now we're talking about uh, fruits and vegetables and we're talking about a lot of the exotic fruits and vegetables a lot of them don't grow in this country uh, naturally but think about uh, also a lot of your nuts and your seeds we talked about sprouting your seeds you can get your vitamin c enzymes a lot of minerals from there but also you can make your your milk you can get a lot of uh, you know zinc from pumpkin seed milk you know We've made pumpkin seed milk. It absolutely tastes delicious. You can get your zinc from that, so you don't need to take your zinc uh, um, supplements unless you're seriously depleted. Um, almonds, almonds are amazing. You know, you can make your your your, your nut milk from there. So there are other ways of, of getting your vitamins and minerals um, rather than um, taking it from from uh, pills and and capsules. I'm just looking at the chat here. Joan, uh, you yeah. mentioned scurvy earlier on as well. Oh, um, yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about what scurvy is? Because it's a, yes. it's, an, it's something that was was common um, with swollen, uh, men at sea, but swollen, uh, bleeding gums. Yep, that's what I've got here, um, which actually affected poorly nourished sailors until the end of the 18th century, and then the opening of previously healed wounds is what I have also. It's, it's what type of gums is it? It says uh, bleeding gums, swollen bleeding gums. Swollen bleeding open gums. of previously healed wounds. Okay, so um, that's something that your vitamin C would help to reduce um, and possibly um, prevent as well. It's actually a vitamin C deficiency disease. Sorry, it affects the gums. Dr. Yes, it affects of systems in the body. Because uh, we couldn't hear you properly, Audrey, but uh, uh, we we did speak about scurvy at the beginning. But uh, it's just one of the things we mentioned. But sometimes people hear the name scurvy and they say, "Yes, uh, vitamin C deficiency causes scurvy," but they don't actually know what scurvy is because uh, kind of a disease of the past, or it seems to be. But I think it may be on the rise in some places where they're not having enough. In fact, the gums, the gums go red and swollen and infected. Yeah. And yeah. vitamin, it just actually clears the symptoms. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Audrey. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Right, Sharon. So what are we going to do now? Because um, I've, I've been enjoying this lovely conversation with everyone. I think it's well, great. I, I, also, I also think we, we need to remind people to, um, to start foraging. I'm going to see if I can find some, some things to um, show your viewers in two weeks. I've been enjoying this conversation with Sorry, is Lily saying something to us or is it all No, I, I can hear no. myself talking. So it looks oh, like okay. Okay. someone's got some, uh, another device. Oh. Okay. Right, so let's just... Where is Lily? Is she muted? Yeah. Okay, so before we um, wrap up for today, um, 
I was going to go back through our promo slides just to remind people of what's happening. And for those of you who have joined late, we won't be having a TTI show on next Saturday afternoon. Um, there is a lot, a lot of sunshine out there still for those of you who are in the country where you, you're having sunshine. I know I'm getting some outside. Oh, I'm seeing it. So I need to get out there and get some. You can see there's a bit of a whitish glow on that side of the room. Yep, that's from the garden. So I am going to go out and have a nice walk and have a look at what I may be foraging tomorrow. <laughs> OK, so looking forward to that. And um, Sorry, where can you forage in London? Where can you forage in London? Yeah. Is it where is it safe? OK, um, well, there are there are there are commons and there are um, woods. If you look, you can go into the woods. Um, if you're going to get things like stinging nettle, you don't want to get it at a level or in a location which will be close to dog walks because you want to avoid that. So avoid the footpath. But it's um, you can even grow some in your house, in your garden. And yeah. You know, many people have these things and they just pull it up. I know at the front of my house there's stinging nettle. And but thankfully, I live close to a country park, so I can have access to plenty of it. But yeah, just make sure you don't go for the older ones as well. So that's why Joan's saying now's the time. You don't want to go for it when it's seeding and old. You want to get it when it's fresh and young and you see the, the greenness of it. It's more I know it's green anyway, but you know what I'm saying? It's more, it's got more, more life more, in it. It's more potent before June. Yes. When the yes. sun hits them, that's when they start to seed and, and you, you're not going to get the goodness. So try to try to forage before they get old. And if, you, and if you're looking to see where is safe in free of dogs, you'll just have to um, have a look around and try and find some, I know there's Epping Forest, there's Hainault Forest, there's, I'm, I'm, this is a long time now, I mean, I'm from London, but it was a while ago. Um, and oh, there's Wimbledon Common, there's, oh, there's Walton, so many places. Waltham Forest, isn't there? Walton, Walton Forest, so those places are more in the north of London, but I'm trying to think, in the south, you can even just go go to Surrey, leafy Surrey is not that far. Um, and just go for a day trip even and do some foraging when you do your day trip in the not so um, not so polluted parts of South London. You know, you can go to Croydon. There's, there's so many places um, that you can go to. And somebody mentioned something about sunlight and living in the sunlight. Well, if you're if you're able to have a holiday, Try and go and get try and go and get a holiday when you're um, able to travel uh, without any bans or restrictions because of COVID. Um, if you're able to afford somewhere and you know somewhere where you can go, so these things these are available. And yes, I appreciate the thank you. So I'm going to go over to our screen share and thank you so much, Joan. You've been it's been wonderful hosting with you. It yeah, really my pleasure. Okay. I enjoy it. I could talk for England, you know that. So Okay. Well, uh, my laptop came off, so I need to be a screen, uh, what do you call it? A uh, co-host oh, again so that I can cool. screen share. So uh, um, co-host. If the host can make me a co-host, <laughs> then I'll be able to screen share the presentation again. Oh. Your PowerPoint. Who's the Who's host? Lean. Oh. oh. I believe... Um, yes, you are. Hello, family. Yeah. Am I, I'm not, I'm not co-host yet, am I? You are. Oh, I am now. Oh, yes. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Marvellous. Right. So if I go back to the promo slides and share. And take it to slideshow view. Right. So, you know, you know about this anyway. And let's move on. So that was today's presentation. We've done the disclaimer. Uh, we've mentioned the Telegram groups, okay? So for those of you who haven't joined us on uh, Telegram before, you do need to download the, the, um, download the Telegram app, and then there is the link to join us so we can stay in touch. We can, um, I might, I'm, I, in terms of a challenge, we can go foraging, we hit, Dr. Franco mentioned about the amount of water we should be drinking. We know we've done the water challenge several times, but if it's one thing that a lot of people kind of neglect. So 
Um, remember that there was a challenge in there for in the presentation for us to be drinking sufficient amounts. We're looking at a minimum of eight glasses of water. So um, if you want some help or some encouragement, join the join the um, Telegram groups, the well, men's wellness group if you're a man, obviously, the women's wellness group if you're a woman, obviously, and the spiritual health Telegram group, TTI Telegram group, where we will share information, not only um, devotions and prayer requests, we also have shared links to a Bible study that happens on a Friday with Remnant Connections, and uh, they're going through the great controversy at the moment, so by all means, come on if you want to find out a lot more about the times that we're living in and the dangers that we can be getting, looking you know, heading towards if we don't know the warnings. If you know the warnings, you're prepared. So please join the spiritual health group. And um, we're going to move on to the next slide. This one is Kevin Lee. So for those of you who have never heard of Kevin Lee, it's an amazing part of Wales in their, in Powys. And the information that you, so the phone number that you need to contact is there on the slide. It is, and I, if you can't see it very well, it's 077 You can contact us on that number for more information on Keth and Lee. And that is our first health conference in the UK where we will be coming apart. And I'm so forward to looking, look, I'm looking forward to the rest of the world bit. Some of us will be working, I know it will be hard work, but it's a different, it's a change. And we're going to get to meet you, as Joan said at the beginning, face to face. Plant-based meals are available um, and there is going to be many mini medical missionaries, ministries, helping ministries. We have ja Jackie Brown from Scotland, Pastor Sam Davis from Spain, Dr. Conrad Vine, originally from the UK, but um, working and serving out in America with Adventist Frontier Ministries. Joanna Daniel looking at mental health, Lucille Fifield looking at body, uh, body chemistry. Alvin McQueen, he'll be doing cooking demonstrations and Andre Crawford will be one of our speakers as well. So we'll have spiritual enrichment as well as physical enrichment and to be honest the two go together the two go together you can't have the spiritual without the physical or the physical without the spiritual and we'll have the fellowship so we really 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 look forward to seeing you there and uh joan is there anything i think you said quite a bit is there anything that you missed that you want to say about Kef and lee no you've you've said it all um sharon just that we're looking forward to seeing everybody um, the bookings are coming in nice and uh, people who are signing up saying they're, looking, they're, they're quite excited about it. Yeah. And also there is a chance to, um, if you want to have a therapy, then there's a chance for you to, to book an appointment where you'll receive some uh, lovely touch therapy treatment. Yep, definitely. And you'll be able to get out into that countryside and get that vitamin, love vitamin D. I love and and some good plant-based food. Yes, okay. someone's, someone's asking if they can come for the weekend. We're opening up the weekend bookings in July. If uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, Sharon. No, no, that's, that's yeah, as far as I'm aware, that's the that's weekend correct. bookings in July. So watch this space. We will definitely be opening up the weekend bookings in, in July. We're dealing with the people who are booking for the week. And in so. terms of the therapies that will be available, will, what, what therapies are they going to be, Joan? Um, there's going to be massage, full body massage if you request it, uh, back massage, foot massage. We're also going to be doing um, steam sauna. Yeah. We're going to be uh, also offering for anyone who wants it, one-to-one uh, -one, uh, consultations. Um, we also have a physiotherapy uh, workshop, but there's a, phys a trained physiotherapy there who you know, if you want, you can uh, meet them as well. It's David. Um, but, uh, Bartholomew. So yeah, and be... Sorry, go ahead. So we have quite a number of people who are um, who are uh, professionals of their own right 
and who are there to serve. And it's all about the teaching, preaching and healing. So it will be the gospel in its entirety there. Amen. Amen. So looking forward to that. And there'll be various other ministries as well available. You know, some on homeschooling, some on essential oils, yeah. some yeah. on... Um, other, other 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 ministries you country won't be living country, country living, living that's right so if you want to set up a sanitarium um lucille's husband arthur fifield will be running a workshop on that and yes you mentioned the homeschooling we're going to have testimonies of people who have actually um done very well you know uh, kind of um gone into the countryside how they managed to do it yeah. and how you can actually look about doing something like that and also it's just about look i'm excited about it i can't talk about it anymore and the accommodation is is self-catered accommodation but self-catered and we have self-catering accommodation as well as all-inclusive so the all-inclusive will be coming out uh, soon um hopefully by the end of next week we'll be sending out to those who have booked already because we know some of you who have, who have booked have said look you know if it's come away and rest a while i mean to say it's going to be come apart and rest a while and i don't want to be cooking yeah, yeah. We have made a provision and uh, we're, we're excited about that as well. And we're not telling you that you have to eat grass. <laughs> no. <laughs> but if you want to, just make sure you wash it good. Okay. So just moving on swiftly, we have the, um, the six-day residential program that's des designed around supporting you to stop smoking. This is in association with Coleth Bailey and Louise Reed. Who, uh, who's from Mercy's Door Health Ministries, and Colith is a health evangelist, medical missionary, um, a biomedicine student. So for more information, the numbers are on there. For Louise, it's 07833-497-532, and for Mavis, it's 07789-9 again, 14576. This is a healthy literature, oh, there will be healthy literature products available for purchase. And it can also benefit those who don't smoke, but would like to help deal with lifestyle diseases through natural methods. So that's an, uh, another um, program, residential program that's coming up. And TTI, I would like to thank you all for your support on coming on and uh, viewing and sharing the programs with your friends, with your family, with your work colleagues. You know, we had last week, the presentation was on cancer. And um, it may well be that you know somebody who's recently diagnosed or even long, you know, has been diagnosed for a while. And you're thinking, what natural things can we use? Or if you go back onto the YouTube channel, our TTI YouTube channel, you can go back and watch last week's presentation along with all the many others that are there. There's plenty, many, many things for you to choose from. So we're not on next week. That's um, just a reminder. But there's, if you want to watch something, uh, one of our previous programs, you are more, well, more than welcome to go on there. So thank you for your support through um, sharing, through praying. And those who feel that they wish to bless the ministry financially, our details are there for you. So thank you so much. I'm going to stop my screen share and we're going to stop the recording. It is now 4.54 UK time. So we will say thank you once again in his absence to Dr. Franco Taylor. Thank you for co-hosting with me, driving with me, Joan, and, and, and our wonderful audience on TTI. And those of you who are on YouTube, yes. thank you for coming on. And this is where thank we say goodbye well, to you. And we look thank forward you. to seeing you again in two weeks' time because Joe will be presenting with us then. Yes, the necessity of touch. Amen. Amen.